Hi, I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks, and today I'm going to show you the technique of making risotto. So what is risotto? Risotto is basically an Italian rice dish. It's not the easiest thing in the world to make, but it's also not that difficult once you have the technique down. And I think that it's this big, bad, scary thing for most people uh, because it takes a little time. It takes about 20 to 25 minutes to make. Um, and people get nervous about that. At the end of the day, it's a very simple dish. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna kind of review the technique uh, and not really worry so much about the ingredients. So I'm gonna to talk to you about technique here and we're gonna flavor it simply. We're not gonna to put too much stuff in it, but it's one of those dishes, once you get down, you can put whatever you want in it and make it amazing. You can put shrimp, you can put vegetables, you can put whatever you want in it. So getting this technique down, it's what's most important. So today, what we're gonna do is really focus on the technique of making risotto. Let's look at the ingredients. This is what I use to serve about four to six people. One small yellow onion, one clove of garlic, about a quarter of a cup of Pecorino Romano cheese, two to three tablespoons of butter unsalted, two cups of arborio rice, about a cup of dry white wine, six to seven cups of chicken stock, and a beautiful little chai flower. I got this from my garden, um, and it's just an optional garnish. I think it's just gonna make this look pretty. There are two ingredients I wanna highlight and talk about a little here. Uh, chicken stock. Chicken stock I'm using for this is a simple chicken stock that I made. Whenever I butcher chicken or cut chicken at home, I save the bones, I save the skin, and I put them in the freezer, and when it's time, when I have enough, or when it's so crowded that my wife yells at me in the freezer, I take it out and make a chicken stock. Um, you have to remember when you're cooking, the quality of the ingredients that you put in are, is gonna affect the quality of the food that you get out of it. So using a good chicken stock that you've made is always the best. If you don't, use a low sodium chicken broth. Uh, this way you can control how much salt goes into it. Uh, but for the most part, chicken stock that I have doesn't have any salt in it, so I can season at the stove. Uh, the other ingredient that I wanted to highlight, and probably the most important ingredient here, is the arboreal rice, right? This is a short grain rice that's high in starch, right? It has a lot of starch, has a lot of starch on the outside. You can't use any other rice. Well, there's a couple other. There's violone nano and carnaroli, which are other Italian rices that you can use to make a risotto, but for the most part, you wanna use those three rices. And the reason for this is because they're a short grain rice that has a lot of starch and it makes your risotto super creamy. You can't have a risotto uh, with sushi rice or, or with rice for paella or even long grain rice or basmati rice. It's not a risotto. So make sure you take uh, the, the time to find Arborio, Arborio Violone Nano or Carnaroli rice uh, for your risotto. So those are the two most important ingredients here, I feel, because they're going to give you the most background flavor for your, uh, for your risotto. I'm going to chop my onion for the risotto. Uh, just take off the ends, and this is just my method of chopping onion. Take off the ends, cut it in half, and then take off any peels. Make sure None of this gets on your board. You want to get all those skins off, okay? Uh, and I'm going to cut this fairly small. I have a video about how to chop onions, uh, and it'll be uh, linked in the description. So my onions are chopped small. I move my cutting board and I slide them into my bowl, okay? And then my garlic, I'm just going to give a whack. Get the skin off. Again, this paper, just like the onion paper, is not good in your food. And there's a little root end there that I like to take the root or the, you know, the root or the stem end off. And then this one I'm not too worried about. I'm just gonna chop it. Okay, I put it back in my bowl. And now we're gonna go over to the stove and cook. We're over at the stove, I have everything I need. Uh, in 
French, we call that mise en place, which means everything in its place. You should have everything within arm's reach of uh, all your ingredients so that you can grab them. You don't have to be running around the kitchen. You want to set yourself up really well. Uh, the general ratio for a risotto is three to one. Three parts liquid to one part rice. And, you know, that could be four to one. But for the most part, you want to have a little extra stock. Uh, and just, be, just in case you might need it and, and your risotto is a little tight, you want to have a little extra stock, which I have. Um, this is a technique, like I said earlier. You want to focus on the technique here, not so much the recipe. If you know the ratio and the technique, um, you can pretty much make a risotto anywhere at any time. So let's get over to the pot and cook this. So now we're going to start cooking. Um, I didn't say this in the ingredients earlier, but I'm going to put a little olive oil in here. So maybe it's about um, a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of olive oil. I'm going to add my onion, okay? Um, and I want to sweat these. Sweating onions basically means we're cooking without color, okay? My, my stove is a little hot. I had my pot a little too hot. But I want to sweat these out and cook them with little to no color because I don't want my risotto to get brown. Okay, so keep stirring these, break them up if there's any two uh, pieces that are too big, but we really don't want to get these brown. We just want to take some of the moisture out. I'm going to add just a touch of salt here, which will draw some moisture out. And um, cook our onions. We just don't want them to be raw. We want them to just be wilted and translucent. So there we go. We're getting there. Cool. So what's great about this technique is that you, once you have the technique down, you can pretty much put whatever you want in it. Uh, shrimp stock, seafood stock, uh, mushrooms. You can do pretty much whatever you want with it. It's a very, very versatile dish. Um, and, you know, again, the ratio for the rice is about three to one uh, liquid to rice. Um, you can flavor it however you want. I'm using onions and garlic. If you want to use shallots, by all means, use shallots. Uh, now I'm going to add the rice. Okay. So I'm going to add the rice and I'm just going to put it in the pan and stir it around with some of that oil. And just kind of coat it with the oil. And I'm going to wait for it to kind of change color. So you can see the rice is kind of... Um, a little translucent with the white center. And I'm gonna leave it on here just to kind of dry it out a little and the rice will kind of turn a nice bright white. Um, again, I don't wanna toast the rice. I don't really want any color here. I just want to uh, dry the rice out or parch the rice a little. Um, that's what I'm gonna do here. Okay. Uh, and start to finish, it should take about, once you have all your mise en place set, it should only take about 25 minutes to do this. Uh, so if you're going to do this for a dinner party of 30 people, uh, you're going to struggle. Uh, this is something you do in smaller batches. It's usually a little easier to do um, uh, smaller batches for less people. Uh, in the restaurant industry, sometimes what people will do is they'll par cook the rice in this fashion. And once it's about halfway cooked, they'll put it onto a cookie sheet or a sheet tray and they'll cool it off. So it's halfway done already. I'm, I'm not going to do that here. We're going to go start to finish. Okay. So you can see that my rice is nice and dried out. It's turned a little white. I'm going to add some of my white wine. And again, you don't have to use all the white wine. I had about a cup, cup and a half. I am going to use it all. And the key here is to, this is where the stirring starts, right? You don't want to beat it up, but you want to continuously stir. Make sure there's no rice on your spatula and make sure there's none on the side. Um, you don't want to just add all the liquid now. We want to add liquid in batches. And that's the key here. We stir the rice. And once the liquid is, is absorbed, we add more liquid. And what this is going to do is going to draw out a lot of the starch. The rice granules are rubbing together. Uh, and it's going to draw a lot of the starch out of the rice and make a nice creamy risotto, okay? Um, but if you just pour all the rice and all the liquid in now, all you're going to have is boiled rice. And that's not what you want. I'm going to add a little salt right now just to season. I season throughout the cooking. And that's kind of what I want to do, season throughout. Uh, but I want this wine to cook off. And what's going to happen is the rice is going to absorb um, the wine. Uh, 
It's going to get flavor from the wine, but it's also going to cook out the alcohol here. So most people who don't like alcohol in their food, this is where your, uh, your alcohol will get cooked out. Okay, so you can see that it's bubbling away. You can see that it's creamy, right? And you can also see that the rice is absorbing my liquid. My liquid was very, um, was very fluid, and now it's kind of getting thick because all the starch in the rice, okay? Uh, I lowered my heat just a little. The other thing that's really important here is that my stock is hot. You don't want to use cold stock for this. I'm going to add an addition of stock right now. My wine is almost cooked out. I'm going to add an addition of stock. Right, just so that the rice is kind of slightly floating, and then I'm gonna stir again. Hot stock is really important. If you use cold stock, the rice is gonna sit in cold liquid for too long of a time, and it's gonna break up rather than stay whole and get nice and creamy. Okay, so I'm stirring. I'm not going too crazy with the stirring. I'm just kind of stirring nice and evenly and taking my time, okay? But you can also see that once I add that stock, it's kind of getting like starchy and creamy, okay? And this is the process, this is the technique. We add uh, liquid, we stir the rice until that liquid is absorbed and we add another addition of liquid uh, in that three to one ratio, okay? And you can see here, uh, I want to add my seasoning at this point because what's gonna happen with the seasoning is it's gonna season the liquid and it's gonna be drawn into the rice. So just a little more salt and I'm gonna season throughout. So you can see it's starting to bubble away. We wanna make sure it's not sticking to the sides or sticking on the bottom. Stir, 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 okay? Um, you notice that I have a metal pot, but my spatula is a plastic spatula. This is a, a beautiful uh, mat for spatula. It's perfect for risotto. I've used it throughout my career or something similar to this. Uh, you don't want to use a metal spoon here because what's going to happen is if you have a metal spoon, it's going to drag along the bottom of your pan and sometimes it could discolor your risotto. So you can see that the liquid's bubbling away. It's starting to uh, be absorbed and it's not so liquidy, it's nice, getting nice and thick. In about another minute, I'm gonna add another addition of my stock. So just another addition of stock. One, two. Cool, we add our stock, I stir it in. Uh, and you, like I said, you don't want this to be sitting there floating in the stock like it's boiling away. Uh, I might have added just a little too much there, but with this technique, you should have a perfect risotto every time, okay? Let it come to a simmer, stir away. Um, at this point, you're kind of tied to the stove, so you want to make sure that you're going to get this right. Adjust your heat if you have to. Sometimes you have to turn the heat up and down. My cooktop is an induction cooktop. I don't have gas, uh, so it's kind of a little, a little more difficult to get the heat right. Uh, but you want to adjust your heat up and down according to uh, what's happening in your pot. See, it's bubbling away nicely, and I want it to bubble away. So if you see that it's starting to stick to the bottom, okay, keep on stirring. The rice granules are giving up some of their starch. They're rubbing together, and my risotto is getting nice and thick. It's starting to thicken. So this is how it goes. We keep on adding... As the liquid is absorbed, we add another, um, another amount of liquid. We don't add a lot of liquid at a time. We basically add liquid as the rice needs it. When I teach this at school, I have the students sit with me or stand by the stove while I do this for 20 minutes straight. And it kind of gets a little boring for people, uh, but this is the technique that I like to teach. Okay, you can smell it, it smells delicious. I have a really nice chicken stock that I made at home with all my leftover chicken bones. Having good ingredients going into this is gonna make it that much better. Risotto is, uh, like I said earlier, is not a particularly hard dish. It's kind of a labor of love. It's time consuming. Uh, so you definitely wanna make this for people that you like and not people you don't like. Um, And I think that's what scares most people is like, oh my gosh, I have to stir all this time. It's fun. Okay, so it's getting thick. I'm going to add a little more stock and keep stirring. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple more additions of stock and we'll come back when it's ready to finish. 
So it's been about 10 minutes, right? You can see that this is getting a little thicker. My rice is um, starting to absorb all that liquid. I'm gonna add one more little shot of salt. I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper, some black pepper. Uh, classically, um, People don't like black pepper and white things, but I really don't have a problem with it. I like the flavor of black pepper as opposed to white pepper. I've ne never been a fan, right? So here's the biggest mistake that people make at risotto, right? Um, they either undercook it or overcook it. You want to taste this. I got a spoon. I'm going to drip some on. I'm going to taste. I'm looking for it to be toothsome or have a little bite or al dente. It needs a little more salt. Okay, so I want it to have a little uh, bite to it, but not so much that it's raw and chalky, okay? Uh, the other thing that people do wrong with risotto is that they make it, so you put it on the plate and it stands up. Um, when we go back to the cutting board, I'm gonna show you what the finished product should look like and how it should look on the plate. So I'm gonna bring this over to the cutting board and we'll finish it. Back over my board, I have my hot rice. I have a little stock in case I need to adjust this. I would normally do this on the stove, but I want you to see everything that I'm doing here. Uh, the seasoning is good. I think I need just a touch more salt. Uh, I have my butter, my cheese, and my garnish. Uh, just remember, the cheese always goes in last, right? I'm gonna add my butter now. It's unsalted, okay? And I'm gonna stir this in. So what the butter is gonna do, it's gonna make this a little more liquidy. Uh, so you gotta play this game between the cheese, if you're gonna add cheese, and the butter. The butter's gonna make this a little smoother and liquidy. Uh, cream doesn't generally go into risotto. If you wanna add cream, you can, uh, as long as it's an ingredient, but it's not, uh, don't use it as a crutch to make this creamy. It should all be about the method, okay? So right now I'm stirring it. I'm actually kind of beating it a little, and you can see it's super creamy. But if for my taste, it's a little tight. I like this to flow. I serve this on a plate. A lot of people will serve risotto in a bowl and it kind of stands up. I want it to flow onto my plate. Uh, the Italians have a word for this, it's called alonda, or with the wave. That's not the exact translation, but it's close, right? So that's why I have my hot stock over here, just to have a little bit of extra just to kind of adjust my liquid content, and I give this a stir. Like I said, generally I do this over the stove, over very low heat. Um, you don't wanna add the cheese and then put it back on the flame. If you add cheese and put it back on the flame, the cheese tends to separate out a little uh, and cooks, and we don't wanna cook the cheese. I'm gonna add my cheese now, okay? And I'm gonna give it a little, a little bit more of a stir, and you can see what the cheese did was, it tightened it up a little, right? So I want it a little looser than this. So just a touch more stock, and then we're gonna put it on the plate. Yeah, that's looking good. I like that, that's good. So it's nice and creamy and delicious. So let's put this on a plate and give it a taste. Before I put it on a plate, I wanna give it one last taste. Really good. Uh, it's creamy, it's hot, it's delicious, it's seasoned well. Okay, so maybe just a touch more stock because I don't want this to be too dry. And we're gonna put it on a plate. So when I put it on the plate, I tend not to just dump it. A lot of people might just dump this on the plate, but I wanna serve it with a spoon. I put it in the center of the plate. Right? I get it on the center of the plate, and then I give my plate a shake. Right? This helps if you have a plate that's hot, but you see how it's a little liquidy uh, it's super creamy and delicious. So I'm gonna take some of these beautiful chive blossoms uh, or chive flowers. They taste like onions, they're delicious. Uh, if you don't have these, it's not necessary. You can put some herbs in here if you want. And that is how you make risotto. Uh, it's like I said before, it's not necessarily a recipe, it's a technique, but that is risotto. This is how you make risotto. It's a technique, not necessarily a recipe. You can do many different things with this. This is one of the simpler versions that I've ever made. Uh, but I want you to see the technique and practice this dish. The only way you get better at things is if you practice. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Chef Frank for Proto Cooks. Give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Give us comments, we love the comments. Good or bad, I try and answer them when I can. Uh, have a good one and Happy risotto.